As Starfleet continues to explore the Delta Quadrant, we need to establish ties. The Janolan Sphere dropped us in the middle of the pond, as it were, and we're going to need lifelines. Our first task in the Delta Quadrant is a familiar one, helping a species to find a new home. A group of Talaxians living in the Entaba system are ready to move to a new homeworld nearby. Admiral Tuvok and Voyager have gone ahead to their main asteroid base to begin the preparations for the transition. The Admirals requested your presence as well. You two work well together. I recommend you take advantage of his expertise. There's no one who knows more about the Delta Quadrant than he does. Altering course to the Entaba system, we set off to rendezvous with Admiral Tuvok. The Tarba system is not the home of the Talaxian colony from 2378. Late into Voyager's journey across the Delta Quadrant, the Talaxian morale ad hoc ambassador Neelix elected to remain with a small colony of only 500 Talaxians. Eventually, they needed to relocate as their numbers grew, and this colony has over 3,000 members. You see, many Talaxians left their homeworld before and during a war of the Harkonian Order. The enemy power occupied Talax and deployed a Metrion Cascade to its moon, Rhinox, killing 300,000. This dark period on their history to this day prevents many from returning to Talax, and those out here are in search of a new potential colony world. The work with Neelix and the goodwill from this colony, spread by the USS Voyager decades ago, make this a good place to start. The Federation can't afford to alienate too many races in this new region. On entering the asteroid belt of the Entaba system, we begin looking for the USS Voyager. It's not long before we establish a comm channel with the intrepid Starfleet vessel, and Tuvok reports some troublesome news. Voyager is under attack by the Kazon. Engines are offline, requesting assistance. The Kazon somehow are here? This far into the Delta Quadrant? They are a technologically limited species, having stolen all their tech from the tribe. For them to have reached this area of space, they would have had to have crossed the Necrid Expanse to navigate through Borg space, not to mention circumnavigate many other cultures that outstrip them in terms of power. I guess if they continued at warp speeds, they might have made it this far in the past 30 years, but why? Out in the far rim of the Delta Quadrant, they were at least a threat to the local planets, and down here, not so much. If I had to guess, I think that opening the Iconian Gate network at Captain Hale's hands has provided them with a shortcut to this area. In which case, this is one of those repercussions Worf and Tuvok were warning of. Thank you for your assistance. We were en route to the Talaxian base when we were ambushed by the Kazon. The damage is relatively minor, but my crew will require time to make repairs. However, I have a personal request. The leader of the Talaxian colony served with me on Voyager. Would you be willing to take me there? Is Space Uber. I'm outside. This base is populated by Talaxians. My shipmate from Voyager, Neelix, joined them before they moved to this location. The Talaxians have been looking for a new homeworld for quite some time, and now they have found one. The Alliance's history with the relocation of the Romulans will be invaluable in this process. We ferry the Admiral to the Talaxian Colony, a large series of towers and buildings bolted to an asteroid. Starfleet! Oh, what a thrill! It's so wonderful to see someone from the Federation again! It's been so long, and I keep in touch with my friends, but subspace isn't the same, and I... As you listen to me, I'm rambling on. My name is Neelix, and I serve as Starfleet's ambassador to the Delta Quadrant. Before that, I spent seven years on the USS Voyager with Captain Catherine Janeway. Admiral Janeway now, she was promoted, and the others of the crew have done well for themselves too. Their exploits opened a lot of doors. Admiral Janeway, of course, she certainly earned that promotion. My link to the Alpha Quadrant wasn't as strong as I wanted it to be, until the Janolan Dyson Sphere opened a path straight to the Delta Quadrant. Now we get all sorts of news, but yours is the first ship to visit. I, uh, I may make a trip to Earth myself sometime, sample the cuisine, but that will have to wait until after the colonization. I barely have a minute to myself anymore, there's just so much to do. Well, I'm certain we'll be able to lend a hand with your colonization efforts. Oh, you've come to help? How wonderful! 
But of course, Starfleet's always pitching in to help out, aren't they? Why, in all my years as ambassador to the Delta Quadrant, I've done everything I could to uphold the good name of the Federation. I don't always have the resources to do more than diplomatic visits, but we try to help out anyone we can, whenever we can. There are Ocomp ships out there right now. Did you know that? My people are helping them explore the stars. Well, that's very noble of you to uphold the Federation's mandate, even at the extreme ends of the galaxy. I guess Admiral Janeway's appointment was officialised when she returned, and you remain the ambassador. What about the colonisation? Ah, oh, where are my manners? You must be tired and thirsty after your long journey. Come to the colony. We'll fix you right up. But, but, but if I could impose on you just for a small favour first. The case on Nistrum have been giving us a lot of trouble lately. We've constructed some shield generators to protect the base, but the case on keep knocking them offline, and all my shuttles are prepping for the colonisation. Could you reactivate the shields for us? Ah, while well, we're out here. Wonderful! Just fly to the generators and start the relaunch sequence. It will take them a few minutes to get up to full strength, but that shouldn't be a problem. After that, beam down to the colony. I'll start making some nice old root stew for you. So, that was Neelix. I see Admiral Tuvok elected not to make his presence known. It seems that Neelix's position as the USS Voyager's ambassador transferred into a semi-official capacity as an envoy to the Delta Quadrant and it's good to see that he treated his position as more than just a title, acting in the interests of others where able, and even helping the Okampa into interstellar space from the sounds of it. Like the Talaxians, the Okampa do have colonies spread out across the Delta Quadrant, though by different means. We set about repositioning the shield emitters around the station. The asteroid they settled on originally had high concentrates of water around it, but the stations collected it and melted the ice for water and oxygen, apparently using geothermal energy from the rock to do so. It amazes me that an object this small has geothermal energy, so I guess it's from gravitational forces. It's an intense effect that the Federation has had on these people. It's been a boon, it seems, but it makes me think what other species out here remember Starfleet, and what events are still in motion today, only because of the ripples of the USS Voyager's passing. Thank you so much for your assistance. You may beam down to our base at your leisure. Oh, and speaking in my formal capacity as permanent ambassador, welcome to the Delta Quadrant. So good to meet you in person. View screens are so impersonal, don't you think? May I shake your hand? I if memory serves, that's how. Mr. Vulcan? Is that you, Tuvok? Indeed. It is agreeable to see you again, Neelix. What a wonderful surprise! C come, my friends, we have so much to discuss. Well, thanks for the warm welcome. You look well, Neelix. As do you, family, children. Being here has changed me for the better. I hear the original colony only numbered around 500. Indeed. This colony is an improvement on your previous home. Twice as large and completely updated. You should see the kitchen. It seems you've got a pretty well established ecosystem here, and trade with others. But you still seek a new homeworld. Of course, children need sun and open skies. A place to put down roots. Well, we might be a bit rusty, but colonize. What was that? Commander Tarsi calls down to inform us that the Kazon returned the minute we beamed down. Fortunately, the Armager drove them off easily enough, but they managed to get a shot off that hit the base. A sensor scan reveals some minor structural damage, thankfully mitigated by the shields. The Operations Bay? Dexter was in there! 
Alright, if somebody was present near the site of impact, we should probably go check on them. Some mild debris lies across the floor, though I'm not sure if this is from the attack. After all, the base is rather cluttered with prep for the colonization. We open the door to the operations bay. An acrid smoke fills the Get air. Get us trapped! Please, do something! Rushing over to a collapsed pillar, we see a Talaxian woman pinned beneath. We give her a bioscan to ascertain her injuries, and thankfully they are minor. So we transfer her pattern to the armager's transporter room. And simply beam her out from under the object. Dex is a little dizzy, but she'll be fine. I, I have to stay with her, though. I'm afraid I must impose on your kindness again. Several of our systems were damaged in the attack, and I can't help fix them just now. It's no problem. We're at your disposal. I'll see what I can do. Several of our systems are malfunctioning. Our communications, environmental controls, engineering, and the controls for the crane loading our ships all have been damaged. So we set about enacting repairs. Thankfully, there are no hull breaches and nothing major collapsed, so the colony is still safe. We can take the opportunity, while Neelix comforts his partner, to explore a little and observe the Talaxian people. The spacious hangar deck is a flurry of activity. The rock of the asteroid acts as the roof, from which rails convey speeding carts of goods. Containers, large and small, are scattered across the deck, while Talaxians mingle in small groups discussing the attack and the preparations for colonization. The people here are ready to migrate, it seems, loitering around the loading bays to be the first on the transport shuttles, rather than stay in their homes in the residential sectors. Most are waiting, but others are running inventory checks, tinkering with consoles, or managing the loading equipment. Many Talaxian shuttles are idling on the hangar floor too, awaiting department instructions. But enough sightseeing, let's continue with our repairs. One of the consoles requires a bit more know-how to fix, and by that I mean doing what the tricorder tells me to do. Handy piece of kit these things, like having a smart internet in your pocket that actually provides you with relevant how-tos. The final damage system is actually not on the hangar deck or the loading bay, but in the control centre, which is through a turbo lift in the eastern side of the map, which can be quite difficult to find. The damage inflicted by the rogue gaze on torpedo undone, we return to Neelix. Thank you so much. Everything seems to be working properly now, and Dex is feeling much better. I need to take one final lap around the base and speak to a few people before we depart. Would you care to accompany me? The Admiral, Neelix, and Hale depart the operations centre to walk the deck and meet with some more of the Talaxian colonists. They are a very sociable lot, and many don't require much motivation to unburden themselves and requisition the aid of these strange newcomers. Originally, the colonists, when Neelix first encountered them, were somewhat guarded around strangers, but it seems the years of prosperity and Neelix's pushing for more openness seems to have worn through their mistrust. Then again, the Talaxians are a notoriously social people, so it probably wouldn't have required much pushing. In one corner of the hangar, it seems, a chef has even set up temporary shop to provide for the waiting. Oh, hello! I'm preparing the most wonderful feast to celebrate the colonization of our new homeworld, and we need to gather spices for the Talaxian spice stew. I'll need Rangonzo, Spith Basil, Krishik, and some Nimian sea salt. I'm sure if you ask around, someone will have them. Isn't Chef Jolax great? He's a good friend, and his falada onion crisp is superb. We're traders. A lot of people have spices. But I bet Alex, Brexa, Wixen, and Maxon can help. This is important to you? It will help the colonization efforts? All right, I'll help. I haven't seen anyone like you around here before. You must be one of those visitors from the Alpha Quadrant. How are you enjoying your time here? Uh, try the Jebelian berry salad yet? No, not yet. Fending off Kazon. Have you got any spices? Ooh, is Jolex cooking? I can't wait. Give him this spith basil. Spice stew isn't the same without a little spith. Right, no, of course. Thanks. Maxon likes his food spicy. I once saw him add amber spice to paraca wings. Ah. <sighs> 
Hi there. Are you enjoying your stay in the Delta Quadrant? Is there anything you need? Apparently copious amounts of spice. Certainly. I have a bottle of Rengonzo from my last trading trip. I was saving it for a special occasion, and today certainly fits. Talaxians are a warm and generous people. <laughs> I love I love how flatly that was de delivered. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, friend. Are you looking for something? Spices. All I have is some Nimian sea salt. Do you need it? Yep. Now, Wixen, he's a reliable guy. You might even say he's the uh, Nimian salt of the earth. <laughs> Hello. You must be one of Neelix's friends from the Alpha Quadrant. Thank you for repairing our shield generators. Is there anything I can do to help you? Chef cooking wants spice. My mate gave me a bit of Prishik last Prixen. Would that help? Yes, thank you. That's the last thing. Alex is like a mother to all the children here. She always has a bit of candy in her pockets for them. Neelix, are you standing this close on purpose? Stop it. Back, back off. Go away. Oh, thank you so much. I'll save you a bowl of stew. Yes, please do, because I went out of my way to do all of this and I've earned it, damn it. I've earned it. With that side quest out of the way, we can actually do some critical work, such as helping those in the control centre. Not that morale and good food isn't important, I'm just, just saying priorities. I need to scan the route we'll take to the colony. But the Kazon attack has damaged our astrometric system. All it will tell me is how far off I am from our target position. I feel like I'm taking shots in the dark. Would you be willing to help me by adjusting the sensor? So we help pitch. realign the sensor array to within one kilometer accuracy, and with that, we're ready to depart. I can't thank you enough for your help. Dex is going to be fine. The doctor says she'll be up and around in no time. Well, that's good to hear. Admiral, are we finished here? I need to return to Voyager. Please escort the Talaxian fleet to New Talix. Roger that, Admiral. We can return to Voyager at your earliest convenience. The Talaxians have much to do. We return to the USS Armager and then transport the Admiral back to his flagship, which is now fully repaired from the Kazon ambush. Thank you for all you have done for the Talaxians. I believe that they will be a valuable ally to us in the days ahead. That would not have been possible without your assistance. I am confident we will see one another again. Until then, live long and prosper. Farewell, Admiral. Peace and long life. Armager to Neelix. Status? Our ships are ready to depart. Travel to the staging area to join us in our new adventure. We take our position at the head of the fleet while the USS Voyager exits the system. The Talaxian convoy is ready to move. The course charted and laid in. We're all accounted for. Let's get this wagon a rolling. Are you ready to depart for new Talax? An uneventful journey later and we arrive at the new Talax system and things aren't as they should be. The system is highly irradiated. We're about to contact Neelix to ask if this is as it should be when he hails us. Are you detecting the theta radiation spikes? Those levels have been normal and steady for weeks now. What could have happened? I was going to say, you picked an odd choice for a home otherwise. Don't risk the convoy, we'll investigate. We move up through the convoy from our overwatch position and clearly the theta radiation levels in this system are spiking. It seems to be emanating from these clouds of green irradiated particles. Our shields will deflect most of it, but we're going to need to perform some more detailed scans to see if we can work out where all this radioactive dust came from. Science officer Tomet says that the radiation was introduced to the system, so it's not natural. That's potentially good news, as it means that the matter was brought here, but why would you intentionally radiate a system? Theta radiation could mean only one thing, the Malon. They lack the technology to recycle antimatter waste, which has led them to develop an entire industry around dumping Theta radiation in various areas. We can't survive on new Talax if the Malon are going to use it as their personal garbage dump. If it's recent, then they may still be in the system. This might be the first contact the Malon have had with the Federation since their encounter with the USS Voyager, and Janeway's reports were not very flattering. 
Theta radiation is a byproduct of certain antimatter reactors, and something the Federation found a way to dispose of cleanly since before the first Starfleet Warp 5 vessels. The Malon, however, continued to dump their waste, and despite being an advanced society, the industry surrounding the waste disposal is so profitable that many do not wish to invest in cleaner energy. We locate three small garbage scows in the process of dumping their antimatter waste. Let's see if we can talk this out. Open the comm channel. Unknown vessel, this site is claimed by the Malon. Go find your own dump site. This is not a dump site. This colony world was claimed by the Talaxian people. I'm afraid you'll have to move on. Why? I was here first. Besides, there's a neutron star near here that makes this the perfect location for our needs. Finding another would be too expensive. Tell the Talaxians to find another planet. We have two options here. We can menace them into leaving or try to be diplomatic, offering them help in locating a suitable alternative dump site. Honestly, it doesn't matter which option we choose because they close the channel on us and power weapons. Janeway reported numerous skirmishes from the Malon. They tend to try to bully other species when they can. This tactic will not work with the Armager. Our opening salvo disables the power grid of one of the vessels instantly, our firepower decades ahead of the Malon. The only caveat is that we must avoid breaching their tanks, as this will just release more Theta radiation into the system, so we aim to disable instead. However, the Malon are throughout this system, and a distress call has already been issued, probably the minute we arrived. Two more vessels warp in, another frigate and a larger cruiser. Neither is a match for the Armager, but that doesn't stop them from trying. Bless them. They shouldn't have hung up on us. One even attempts to deploy a cloud of radiation in the hopes of driving us back. A salvo of low-yield torpedoes puts an end to that bright idea. With the second cruiser disabled, we're about to hail them again, and then we detect more Malon ships en route. Targeting the proclaimed battleship, we hit it with everything we have to break through its shielding. It doesn't take long. The special charges it deploys can hit pretty hard, but overall the Malon, like the Kazon, have not been able to keep up with the advancement of Starfleet technology. Honestly, this makes a nice change from trading blows with the Undine and the Borg. Oh, they're hailing us! Okay, now we can answer. Enough! You've ruined me! Wrecked my ship! At least spare my life! Tarsi, how many more torpedoes have we got left? 60, you say? <laughs> the Malon are gone, but the radiation is still around. Oh, what can we do? This would have been a perfect homeworld. But we can't live here if the radiation is going to affect the entire planet. It's alright, stay with the fleet and watch our backs. The Federation's been cleanly dealing with Theta radiation for years. We can just take it in and neutralise it over time. We spend the next few minutes undoing the Malon's damage by gathering up the radiation pockets until what's left is at tolerable levels. Radiation in space is a common occurrence, the cosmic background awash with the unfiltered emissions from stars and the like, but for the most part ship hulls and shielding, like a planet's ozone layer, protect the biology of life. When it reaches intolerable levels however, then we have a problem. We finish hoovering up the Theta Radiation and signal the Talaxians. Thank you so much for all of your help. You are a true friend to me and to the Talaxian people. Your crew will always be welcome on Utalix. And good luck in your voyages. I hope to see you again soon. It's been a pleasure, Neelix, and good luck with your world. And don't hesitate to call the Federation if you need anything. In return for protecting the Talaxians from threats like the Kazon and the Malon, Perhaps we can utilise their far-reaching trade. They have been reaching out and establishing a strong web of contacts in the Delta Quadrant, 
hence the array of exotic spices from all over that they seem to possess, so clearly they have reach. Still, that's for the Federation to mull over, but hopefully this is the beginning of a strong and lucrative tie to the Talaxian people. Maybe even one day in the far future we can declare new Talax as part of the Federation itself. It's good, after the threat of Cooper, the Voth and all this talk of Dyson Spheres and the looming presence of the Iconians, to get back to doing something helpful, something that the Federation used to do a lot more of. It's funny that Starfleet has become so bogged down in war that we risk losing sight of its other responsibilities, humanitarian missions, exploration, scientific discoveries, and it took the efforts of an alien from the other side of the galaxy to remind us of those values. Neelix very much tried to emulate the principles of the Federation, and what did he strive for? Not technological power, but the first thing he mentioned was that he's been trying to help out other species like the Ocumpa. That's how he views the Federation, having been removed from the past 30 years of turmoil that we in the Alpha Quadrant have faced. And maybe, when this is all said and done, we can get back to that, to the people that Neelix sees. So, I hope to see you again for the next part of the ever-expanding narrative of Star Trek Online. And until the next time, thanks for joining the crew of the USS Armager as we chart the waters of the Delta Quadrant. Thanks again, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.